when you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about George R. R. Martin and some of the thoughts that he's kind of been bringing out in an interview that he seems to have done within the last week, at least of me recording this video. And I want to also talk about an auto blog post that he actually that he actually put out the 22nd. I am recording this of the 24th. I want to talk about a couple things here because it does seem to be an interesting idea of George R. R. Martin and what his actual thoughts are on House of the Dragon. Because as you guys know, the show ended a few weeks ago, right? It's been a good amount of time now since House of the Dragon has stopped season two and we've got, we're going into season three in the coming years. And so I want to talk about that for a second because if you think about what's coming out with George R. R. Martin, or I guess the lack of certain things coming out right now with George R. R. Martin and thoughts on House of the Dragon, it could be a pretty big indicator into what he feels about the actual show. But before we dig into the video, I did want to say a thank you to my Patreons and my members for supporting me on this channel. If you do want to become one, you get videos as soon as I put them up on YouTube. Usually it's days earlier from when they go live to the public. And also you do get an exclusive video each week. But Let's talk about George R. R. Martin in this interview. So George R. R. Martin uh, seems to have these remarks on talking about how book adaptation is seeming to go towards the wayside as you have these you have these producers and screenwriters coming in and having their own ideas for kind of the source material. And I think this is being brought up for a number of reasons. Uh, if you think about what we've gotten over like the last year, year and a half, right? We've had a Percy Jackson adaptation from a book. We've had, you know, Fallout adaptation from a, you know, a game, Borderlands from a game, um, you know, Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, a lot of stuff right now that's coming out that is stuff from a source material. If you want to look at stuff like The Witcher as well. Right now, there's just a lot of products coming out that it's, you're seeing that that stuff has a fan base. You're taking it, you know, there's that established interest in it. You don't have to really hype it up yourself and then taking it on your own story. I think Star Wars has been another one of those that's kind of also screwed that up given how they change lore and all this stuff all the time. They break continuity. And so I think George R. R. Martin is responding to that stuff, but also House of the Dragon as well. Because like I referenced, on his not a blog on August 22nd, he put up this post that had pretty much nothing to do with anything House of the Dragon related, nothing with like Game of Thrones or Winds of Winter, nothing in terms of any of that or Dunkin' Egg either. And so when you're going through this Narda blog, which I'll probably have a little, at least a parts of it on screen while I'm kind of talking about it, this just doesn't really have anything to do with any of this, right? It's talking about, you know, some, some stories or maybe some people he's met and stuff like that. Um, but again, like you guys can see on screen right now, pretty short Narda blog and nothing to do with House of the Dragon. If you look even a little bit further down, you know, July uh, 11th was the last time we got an update on what he thought about House of the Dragon or anything else on with some fire related. And he seemed to be really pleased. Now, let's keep this in the back of our minds. He was fairly positive about stuff going on with the dragons, um, you know, back in July 11th. And, you know, that is important to understand because that came after the fourth episode of House of the Dragon, which is by far one of the best episodes of the entire show. And after that point, well, you had some divisiveness, right? Some people hate episode five. Some people like episode five. I'm kind of in the middle. Episode six, I tended to like, but now based upon where the story went, I'm not as positive on episode six. Uh, there's other people that just did not like episode six. That's the one that got review bombed. Episode seven, a lot of people like episode seven. I am not one of those people. And then it kind of seems like majority of people kind of disappointed in the season finale. And so you have George R. R. Martin who... Again, it's been weeks now. It's been weeks and weeks and weeks since the show has ended, and there's nothing here. And I want you guys to remember something that Ricky talked about. Me and him talked about a lot this you know season of Breaking Down House of the Dragon Season 2, is that whenever George R. R. Martin stopped um, liking Game of Thrones or caring about it as much, it's when they started to kind of deviate from his projects and then he wouldn't talk about it anymore, right? He would just stop talking about it. He wouldn't say anything negative, you know, until the show was done, but he also wouldn't say anything positive about it either. And so I think that's really telling because then when you get these kind of passive aggressive statements that he's talking about in this interview where, you know, he seems very critical of book adaptation and TV shows and movies, 
that's really telling because I've, I've talked about this a lot because for me, I am somebody that is very critical of House of the Dragon because I really love Fire and Blood. I love the Dance of the Dragon story. And so a part of it is I want it to live up to what I have for the expectations of what the dance is in the book for me. But I also try to realize, okay, yeah, it's not going to be the exact same thing. And I also want the show to stick to its own continuity and stuff like that. But the problem occurs when you start changing things and they don't make a lot of sense given the source material or even the continuity of your own show. And so that's why I think even when you had something like, like Blood and Cheese, for instance, in season two, where I was like, it was definitely different from the book but it wasn't something that was like oh man this is terrible it breaks the show because it still worked within the show's continuity it's why i wasn't that critical on it in terms of like the overall picture even now i'm not that critical on that but then when you have stuff later on in the season that are very different from the book and they also are not the best in terms of the continuity of the show i would point to mainly allison's arc and some of the things going on there that's when you get to this point and so i think it's really telling that george r, r. martin that is the, his biggest thing that comes out of kind of this interview that he did that he did over the last like week. And that was like the biggest part of it that came out of it is him talking extensively about, you know, how to take book adaptations and how even books right now are kind of being rewritten because of, you know, just we're in a different time, right? If you think about when books would have been made in the past, it was a completely different time period. There were different standards and things like that. I mean, it, it's still crazy to me to think about, you know, if we go back, what, 150 years from now, I mean, there was still slavery in the United States. That's something that's crazy to me. Um, but that just shows you like how much we change as a society, just given like 50 years, you know, what, what, what changes then, you know, another 50 years goes by and bam, now you have the internet, you have all these other things. It's just different times. And so when you see people that are trying to modernize and go back to stories that were not written to be in this modern time period, and I would look direct, I would look directly at Rings of Power when I say this, you know, there's part of that issue as well. And so I think George R. R. Martin, you know, he's been, you know, quite negative, like a pessimistic, I would say, over the last like two years, because a lot of writers, you know, or people that he knows or is friends with are, are dying because he's getting up there in age. And you look at some of these comments and those things, and yeah, I think he's probably not very pleased with House of the Dragon season two for a lot of reasons that we've already talked about, right? HBO not, you know, fully backing House of the Dragon to give it all the budget and to give it all the episodes that it needs to be successful. Uh, as well as even just the writing choices that Ryan Condal and, and the team have made, I think George R. R. Martin would be very frustrated. As somebody that was very passionate about this show, if I'm critical of it and I'm like almost very distraught based upon how the season ended and you know my love of this show is kind of depleted itself, I can only imagine how George R. R. Martin feels about his own characters, the characters that he made, that he thought up in his brain and even a character like Damon, who's his favorite character, and the, the vast differences between the Damon of, of Fire and Blood and of the actual show, you know, characters like Allison, who he made, and yes, they took different liberties with the character of Allison, but it's still his character. And so, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. I just wanted to give a quick discussion video kind of about what's coming out with George R. R. Martin right now, and maybe this might not age well, maybe... You know, a day before I upload this or a couple days after I upload it, maybe George R. R. Martin talks about House of the Dragon or something and completely changes the context of this video. But as of right now, this is kind of how I feel about the show and George R. R. Martin's thoughts. I just don't think it's that much of a coincidence that he starts having these critiques that I myself have of House of the Dragon, especially when it's George R. R. Martin's own characters, his own world. But thank you guys all for watching, and I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.